Every now and then, someone from Pike County, Kentucky makes the national news. But on October 16, 2012, an event in Pike County made international headlines when local astronomer Alan Epling captured on film something that even scientists can't explain a month later. Hello, I'm Shannon Deskins from East Kentucky Broadcasting, and for the next 15 minutes, we're going to take a long look at what happened that day and what has happened in the month following the sighting of the UFO, the still unidentified flying object. Tuesday, October 16, 2012, was a beautiful fall day in Kentucky with not a cloud in the sky. Pike County resident and amateur astronomer Alan Epling was watching television around 3 p.m. when his family called him outside. said, uh, Grandpa, come here and look at this funny airplane. So everybody crowded out except me. I stayed in here watching TV. and They looked up at the sky and finally they said, Alan, you got to come here and look at this. So I went outside. What I saw looked like a bright daytime star. Now, my... Astronomy background tells me there's only one thing that would cause that in the heavens. That's a uh, supernova explosion. Those events are very rare, <laughs> one a century or so forth. So I got my binoculars, and I thought, that'd be lucky if I happened to catch this. And I looked at through my binoculars. I didn't see a star. In fact, I saw um, looked like two parallel white lines hanging in the sky. And I'm also a private pilot. I know planes. This was no plane, and it wasn't a helicopter. So that's when I got real excited. <laughs> so that's when I got my telescope out, and uh, a good eyepiece, about a 150-power eyepiece, and um, trained it on the object. And I noticed it was remaining stationary. It wasn't moving with the prevailing winds. You know, At that altitude that it seemed to be at, it should be slowly moving to the east. But it wasn't. It was staying stationary. So uh, I watched it for a while, then I thought, I'd, I better get my camera and get some of this. So this is my camera that I took the pictures with. And I spent about half an hour taking just one shot after another, hoping one of them would come out clearly, because it's hard to hold the camera steady through an eyepiece of a telescope. And I was afraid to get a camera mount for my telescope, because I was sure if I ran away from the telescope to get it, it'd disappear on me. <laughs> So I just kept shooting. Finally, I decided, well, I better get some video too. So I, I shot a little bit of video, and that's what I put on YouTube. And um, I just kept watching it. In fact, my wife um, watched it with me for over two hours. And Alan wasn't the only person who was watching the sky that day. According to the Kentucky State Police Post in Pikeville, five people called that afternoon reporting something strange in the sky. And we've talked to dozens of people across eastern Kentucky and southern West Virginia who describe seeing the exact same thing. But while many imaginations started running wild that afternoon, the old chemistry and physics teacher in Alan Epling kept his mind grounded, so to speak. It had to be, I felt, something earthly origin. Uh, It just didn't look like my idea of what (laughs) a standard UFO should look like. (laughs) And I started looking first at balloons because that was my first impression. And um, I looked at solar balloons. I ruled out solar balloons because they have roughly the same shape, but solar balloons have to be dark. They have to be painted black in order to work. Uh, it, It has to be black to absorb the sun's solar energy in order to heat up the inside and cause it to rise. It, if you don't paint it black, it doesn't work. But this thing that I photographed seemed to be translucent. It look, looked to be con- clear. I could see what looked like the sky on the other side of it through it. But um, it just didn't fit any of the images that I was seeing. I, did, I knew it wasn't a weather balloon because weather balloons, every one I've ever seen, is huge and round. And because Alan could not identify the object that he watched for more than two hours, he filed a report with MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. MUFON is currently the largest and oldest UFO organization in the world, with more than 800 trained field investigators in nearly 40 countries. And Alan Epling says that MUFON has been very helpful. MUFON has been very cooperative and very helpful to me, and I I have to really commend them because 
they're not just a fly by night organization. And I've talked to um, uh, two of uh, the representatives here in, in Kentucky, two investigators, and their objective is to disprove what you say. And I admire that. If they, if they go all out in their efforts to disprove what you're saying is real, and they find that they hit a brick wall and can't disprove it, they know they have a bona fide UFO. <laughs> After that conversation with Alan Epling, we reached out to MUFON, hoping to speak to one of the investigators in Kentucky. However, the person who called us back was the international director of MUFON, David McDonald himself. And we asked Mr. McDonald what the first steps are when they begin an official investigation. What we try to do is eliminate all of the it could be's. You know, it could be a plane, it could be a helicopter, it could be the space station, all of those things. It could be a solar array. And when you eliminate all of those, you come down with, we don't know what it is. Uh, and that's the nut you try to break. David McDonald is the former MUFON state director for Kentucky, so naturally he took an interest in this case. I saw this thing come up, and I called the current state director, and she told me, she said, Dave, she said, this is, this is, this is just crazy. And uh, the investigator we have working on it is, is uh, a devotee of quantum physics and a number of other things, and he told me, he said, Dave, this, just, this is unlike anything I've seen. He said, it almost looks like it's generating plasma. And if you look at those blown up photos, it does. McDonald's team of mathematicians and scientists went to work to try to determine first how high this object was in the sky. And both the MUFON team and our local astronomer, Alan Epling, estimated that it was about 50,000 feet high, which Epling says all but destroys the solar balloon theory that many have said that it has right. to be. At 50,000 feet, you're definitely in the jet stream. And the, and the winds up there are constantly moving in a single direction, uniform. You don't have the swirls that you get around the ground. Uh, up there, it's, it's a constant, uh, like a river, a current of wind. It doesn't change direction abruptly like it does down here. I can't see a balloon with a thin wall, as translucent as this seems to be, hanging in the sky, resisting that kind of wind. It would tear it to shreds. And if it was being carried with the wind, then it would pass over in just a matter of minutes, like 10 minutes, it'd be coming and then gone because it'd be moving with the air currents. And MUFON's international director, David McDonald, agrees. That's way too, too high and way too long for a hovering balloon. It, it just makes it implausible. Now, at that altitude, that sucker's up by the jet stream. Well, you can have 500 knot winds in the blink of an eye in the jet stream. So, so a balloon is not going to sit motionless for two hours. Not going to happen. And for good measure, another MUFON expert weighed in on the solar balloon theory, and he said no way. He said it certainly has the, the capability of being such a device, but if you look at how flat it is, there's simply not enough room to create the kind of lift to get that thing at the distance that it, that it was at. Um, not only that, but he started calculating the size versus the distance. This thing's 100 feet long. This concludes part one of our two-part series investigating the October 2012 UFO sightings. Yes, I said sightings. In part two, we'll show you at least three other sightings of what the experts say is the same object. And you won't believe where they are. Plus, we'll hear the official results of MUFON's investigation and hear what the experts have to say. <laughs>